in this session we will discuss about uh, how to represent the body in an arbitrary direction so first of all we will discuss about uh, more on representation of orientation then we will discuss about uh, the three rotations about fixed axis x y and z axis and then we will talk about the three rotations about the moving frame which are called as Euler angles so and then we will try to understand the relationship that what is the difference between the rotations about fixed axis and what is the difference between if we take the rotations about the moving axis so first of all regarding the orientation so we know that uh, the orientation of any body with respect to any given frame of reference can be shown with the help of uh, a 3 by 3 rotation matrix and these rotation matrices are orthogonal in nature that we have discussed and having unit magnitude and we also know that the determinant of rotation matrix is always equal to plus one and that's why they are called as proper matrices because the proper means that the determinant of any given rotation matrix is always plus one also we know we have seen in the previous sessions that any proper orthonormal matrix have skew symmetric structure s such that it can be written as i3 minus s inverse into i3 plus s so where i3 represents a 3 by 3 identity matrix and s represents a skew symmetric matrix where s we know is equal to minus s transpose if the matrix is skew symmetric and we know this is how to represent this matrix here y should be negative and we can know that the three columns of a rotation matrix can be written as x cap y cap z cap where cap represents that this vector is a unit vector and we also know that each one of the vector is a unit vector and they are mutually perpendicular so as i mentioned rotation matrix having nine entries and there are six constraints these constraints are uh, the norm of x must be equal to 1, the norm of y should be equal to 1, the norm of z equal to 1 and because x and y are mutually perpendicular so the dot product of x dot with y is, must be equal to 0 similarly x with z and y with z has to be 0. So these are the six constraints that's why any rotation matrix can be represented with the help of only three independent quantities and rest all the six quantities are dependent on each other. And finally, we can say rotation matrices don't commute. So let's take the example. In order to prove that rotation matrices don't commute, we can consider two rotation matrices. One about, let's say, z-axis 30 degree and one about x-axis by 30 degree. Let's try to calculate these rotation matrices. So we know the first matrix are z30, which can we know is the standard template about the z-axis where the z column has to be like this way. 0 0 1 and 0 0 1 both rows and column has to be like that way and then we have the rx 30 which means that this is a rotation matrix about uh, x axis and angle is the 30 degree again now you can see along the x axis so first row and first column has to be 1 0 0 and 1 0 0 and the remaining entries are cos theta minus sin theta minus sin theta cos theta so if we if we multiply these two this is the final result and if we swap the result that result don't match so which means that the rotation in general don't commute with each other so now next comes the spatial transformation x y z angles if we want to orient the body in 3d space at any arbitrary angle that can be achieved by three rotations in sequence about the three main axes so the first in this category is called as x y z fixed angles so let's assume that both the frames are coincident and first what we'll do we'll rotate b the moving frame axis about x a so why x a because we want to have all the orientations with respect to the fixed frame of reference that's why it is called as x y z fixed angles so let's have the first orientation here you can see earlier both the frames are coincident so now if you have the rotation about x a axis you can see the frame y b the yb axis and the zb axis will move and it will move to the new position yb dash and zb dash so this is the rotation angle gamma now after having this rotation we can have the next rotation let's say about ya axis here you can see the rotation is not about yb dash but it is about the fixed ya axis that's why it is called as fixed angles y a so accordingly the frame b will orient by some more amount and that is called as x b double dash y b double dash and z b double dash 
and finally you can have the third rotation about z a axis the angle is alpha so then you can have the further the frame b will orient further that's written by three primes then the third third orientation is about the fixed z a axis about angle alpha again the whole frame b will orient by some new amount so that's why the third frame description is written by three primes so each of these rotations take place about the fixed frame of reference that's why they are called as x y and z axis or also these uh, rotations are also called as uh, roll pitch and yaw and roll is always about z axis this we have to keep it in mind because the motor axis is always along the z axis and certainly if it is in a sequence either it's a roll pitch yaw or yaw pitch roll so yaw is always along the x axis and pitch is always about the y axis so now let's try to see these are the three rotations what we have discussed through so you can see the frame b first goes to frame b prime then b double prime and b triple prime after having three successive rotations and these rotations are to be performed in this order let's see over here so these are the way to write the rotations so first of all assume that the all the frames are coincident over here so this is marked by this i so then we have the x you can see over here the first notation is x and the angle is gamma so that is the first rotation being performed on i when both the frames are coincident this is called as the first rotation then you have y with angle beta second rotation and then the third rotation if we start from here we are starting from the rightmost direction and going towards the left so that's why the sequence of rotations are from right to left so if we have any rotation about the fixed axis that is the way so we have to read x followed by y followed by z right so let's try to see it in a sequence so where now we have c alpha we'll write it as cos alpha s alpha we'll write it as sin alpha and we we'll first take how to write z about alpha this is the rotation matrix then r y beta this is the way it, it should be written and then finally r x gamma this is the way it should be written so if we now multiply them all so we should get this as the final rotation matrix so again just to conclude over here this is a rotation matrix in which we have given only three numbers or three variables what are those variables alpha beta gamma so the whole matrix can be defined with the help of these three numbers we need not to give these nine entries all these nine entries are dependent on these three numbers alpha beta and gamma so then rotation performed in the order about x a by angle gamma y a by angle beta and uh, z a by angle alpha so the crux over here is these kind of rotations are called pre multiply because over here if you see the i over here so before i we are going with with x and then with y and then with z so that's why we are saying it's a pre multiplication so we are multiplying in the left hand side and any subsequent rotation which is about the fixed frame of reference we have to pre multiply let's go ahead and uh, see if this rotation matrix is given how to calculate the inverse so let's say this rotation matrix is given to us as numbers and these numbers we know are equal to this matrix which we have just calculated so can we back calculate the angles so first of all let's try to calculate the angle beta we can simply calculate as the square root of the first two entries of the first column like over here and over here so if we take r11 and r21 we will square it and sum it we know that will cos beta we can have it common and we have sin square alpha plus cos square alpha that boils down to 1 so we can calculate cos of beta and then we can have sin of beta from the third entry from here if you take the negative of this entry we can very well calculate the so whatever is the entry over here whatever is the number over here so if we take the negative of that number we know that number represents sin of beta right so then in order to calculate beta we always use a two argument tan so as to take off negative positive and the issue of quadrant can be resolved so simply we can say beta equal to a tan 2 Minus of r three one plus under root of r one one square plus r two one square. This is simply we can calculate the beta and a ten two is called as the two argument ten and it will give us the right quadrant in which the angle will lie. So next 
comes the alpha so in this alpha what we have to do we have to r21 so this entry you know if we cos beta we have already calculated right so we can whatever is this entry so if we divide it by cos beta we can calculate sin alpha and the first entry if we divide it by cos beta again you can calculate cos alpha so both sin alpha and cos alpha are calculated so you can use again the a tend to argument to find out the alpha angle so next comes the gamma so if we again take this entry r32 and if we divide this number whatever is the number given in at this by cos of beta which we have already calculated so that will give us sin of gamma and if we have this number r33 and divided by cos of beta we should get cos of gamma we can now use the two argument 10 so gamma is equal to a tan 2 under the brackets we have r32 divided by cos beta r33 divided by cos beta so this is how we can back calculate the three angles so we can take the example let's rotate all the three axes by 30 degree in rotations so we have these the sequence so first we'll calculate about z axis followed by y axis followed by x axis so this is basically i is over here the meaning is over here you have the first rotation about x then rotation about y then rotation about z that's why we call it pre-multiply so this is the sequence of the rotations from right to left this is right side and this is left side we can now back calculate we can plug in all the values calculate this matrix and from here these are the numbers which we have written as r11 r12 r13 like this way so let's say these numbers are given so we have now have the formulas from how to calculate alpha beta gamma angles we can simply apply those formulas so we can calculate r31 this r11 r21 so beta will be minus 32.3 degrees alpha will be 18.4 degrees and gamma will be 29.9 degrees so next comes the Euler angles so now i think the concept will be clear what is the meaning between the fixed angles and Euler angles so the difference between this is that all the three rotations are not about the fixed axis but every rotation is about the moving frame of reference and it will be much easier to interpret because as the body will rotate we have the body attached frames so it's very easy to rotate the body with the previous rotation we know the orientation of the body and we know that the moving frame of reference is rigidly attached to the body so the interpretation becomes much much more easier let's try to see the significance so again we have the frame b so first both the frames are coincident so first we'll rotate zb the frame b about the axis zb by angle alpha so then by angle beta and then by finally angle gamma so here what is the difference between the previous here the difference is that all three rotations are with respect to the moving frame of reference so that's why they are called as Euler angles so let's try to see these are the three rotations and these rotations are written with the help of primes in order to differentiate that these are the rotations with respect to moving frame of reference whereas the previous ones there is no primes that will differentiate that these are the rotations about fixed frame of reference so now let's try to calculate these rotations so over here you can see the i is over here what is the meaning of i that both the frames are coincident at this moment so first we'll take the rotation about z angle alpha this is the rotation about moving frame of reference so whenever there is a rotation about moving frame of reference we have to post multiply any subsequent rotation we post multiply you can see the sequence of rotations is left to right again we'll do these three matrices rz is written like this way rotation about y angle beta is written like this way and finally the rotation about x axis and angle gamma is written like this way so but what is the difference so this is the first rotation followed by this is the second rotation and followed by this is the third rotation this is the sequence of rotations and you can have some rotations about fixed frame of reference some rotations about moving frame of reference so what is the crux so any rotation about fixed frame we have to pre-multiply and any subsequent rotation about the moving frame of reference we have to post multiply so let me take example so now if you have to pre-multiply if you have to take the rotation about z axis about angle let's say alpha 
so this is what is the meaning of we have taken the rotation about fixed frame of reference and let's say there is a subsequent rotation about y axis moving frame of reference so i should write r y dash beta so that is the post multiplication so that is the difference between the fixed frame of reference rotation and moving frame of reference so any further rotation let's say the third rotation is about fixed then rotation is over here and the next rotation is about moving then the rotation is over there so that's why it's called pre multiplication and post multiplication and finally if you multiply again we have the same result so what is the crux so let's say if we have to orient the body in a particular orientation so three rotations taken about the fixed frame of reference in a proper sequence will give you the same result as the three rotations taken about the moving frame of reference in the opposite sequence and over here what we say post multiply so we'll have an example again same example everything remains same there is no difference all three rotations taken in 30 degree angle so everything remains the same every calculation remains the same so i'll just skip through this all results are same thank you